Hi there, friends. It looks like I'm live, but there's always a bit of a delay. So I am just going to wait for everything to catch up with me. I think I see that there we are. We are live on my laptop. Let me make sure it's muted so we don't get a really echo. I'm just waiting for my phone to catch up. It's always a competition. Let's see which one is going to go first. Today it was the laptop. So I see that there's a couple of you here already in the chat. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Just want to make sure I'm going to be able to see all of the um, comments as we go. So uh, hi, Pamela and Dana. I'm Cheryl and Deb. So happy to see you guys here today. So uh, there should be joining us momentarily. She will be the one uh, behind the Pinkfresh Studio name moderating today. Um, and I'm excited to create a card with you today. I am going to be using that floral bobble stamp set that just released in our holiday collection, but I am going to be using it for a non-holiday themed card. I'm actually going to make a wedding card today. Uh, when this set came out in the last year's holiday event, it was the first thing when I saw that beautiful bobble piece. So that is what I'm going to do with it today. We're going to make a fun wedding card, but I think you could make any type of celebratory card with this. I'm leaning towards um, wedding today, but it could be uh, engagement or baby or birthday. I feel like there's so many good options with this. So, but uh, I see more people are popping on with us. So, so excited to have you guys here with us today. I am waiting for my hot foil assistant to get heated up. I it on right before going live. So um, uh, we got to wait for that to heat up before I can get going anyway. Um, but we do reserve about the first five minutes to um, uh, let people find us, give a chance to chat for a minute with everybody. Now, ignore my kind of weird lumberjack outfit I have on today. I made a huge mistake on Sunday. We just got new paddle boards and we, we were taking them out for their maiden voyage. The weather was gorgeous on Sunday, but I got sidetracked when I was putting on my sunscreen and I forgot to have my husband finish up my back and my back was fully exposed and I am real burnt, like to a crisp. So I can only stand certain fabrics on my skin right now and it, it has to be really soft if it's touching and this is really soft. So Kind of got like a fall lumberjack mode going on today, uh, but we're, we're going to definitely make a more like fresh summery card. So uh, just, it is what it is when you make the mistake and burn yourself. <laughs> that was just dumb. I am normally like the sunscreen. Uh, I ask you a million times if you've put it on and we just got excited and sidetracked by uh, us gathering all of our things. Up and completely okay. Before we flip around and get going. Let's just go over a few of the things that we always go over in the intro. First things, if you are new today, welcome. Uh, let us know in the comments if you are new. We love to welcome you and um, uh, we hope you enjoy what you see and you'll keep coming back. Once I flip the camera around, I don't see as much. But, uh, my lovely partner in crime, Heather, she is there in the comments and ready to welcome um, everybody joining us. So this is just a big blanket welcome to everyone new uh, or veteran and has been hanging out with us uh, for, you know, years now. I'm so glad you're here and I'm excited to make a card with you today. Yes. Um, Dana, I have been doing that um, multiple times per day. So yep, Alo has been my best friend. Alo and my eczema lotion. <laughs> I don't technically have eczema, but I have sensitive skin, and I've just found that that lotion works for me. All right, so a couple more things. We give away a $15 gift card code at the end of our lives. Heather will pick that winner randomly from the comments. Um, all you have to do is what you're doing now. Chat with us in the live chat. You can ask questions. You can leave comments. Um, I may not see all of your questions, but uh, Heather is Wow. She's really good about catching them, uh, especially the ones that I miss. Uh, if we both miss them, just ask again because we probably didn't see it. Sometimes the comments fly really fast. One other way that you can um, enter or get an entry into the giveaway is underneath this video somewhere. There's a little button. It has an arrow and it says share. And that and share it somewhere. You can share it to your Facebook page. You could share it to your Instagram stories. 
you could share it. Maybe you have like an email or a message with uh, some crafty foods. You could put it in there. And then finally, if there is a crafting Facebook group that you're, you're a part of, feel free to share it there as long as it uh, follows the rules. That are There are some that don't really like when people um, add live stream links. So keep that in mind and make sure you know the rules. Come back here. Let us know that you've shared. And uh, that's just an extra entry. Um, I did not know about lavender oil or apple cider vinegar. So I may have to try uh, a couple of those out because my this burn, I am two days in and it is still stinging. So I definitely got myself pretty bad. All right, I think I've gone over everything. One final thing, not an entry into the um, giveaway, but if you could just give this video a thumbs up, we would really appreciate it. It helps to reach both now while we're live, but also upon the replay. So uh, we love to get Pinterest Studio products out there in front of all paper crafters, especially paper crafters that haven't found us yet. So that a thumbs up will really help. And thank you all for your remedies for your sunburn. I'm definitely going to take your advice after this live or probably when my husband gets home and can help me. Um, so I really do appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get this camera flipped around. My hot foil system is, um, it is all heated up and ready to go. So we should get going on today's card. All right, so as you can see, we're all heated up. And the way that I heated it up is there's just a power button on the back and I just flipped that on. And I just waited for this platform ready light to turn green. So today we are going to use the largest nest, nested hexagon for our card today. So I'm going to go ahead and put that hexagon die on our hot foil system. And then I'm going to hit the timer button. And you'll notice that the timer button is blinking currently. We're waiting for it to stop blinking. And that's when we know that. Um, it is time to get going with the hot foiling. <laughs> Lots of remedies. Thanks, friends. Like I said, I've really only done the aloe currently, so I probably will definitely be trying out some other options. All righty. And today, while this is heating up, we are going to be using matte gold foil today. I thought that would look really pretty on a wedding card. I've already trimmed my foil. I've just trimmed it to six inches so I know that I'll have plenty of foil to cover the entire hexagon. And then we will go ahead and solid foil this today as well because uh, I'm not completely sure which one I want to use. So I'm going to grab this afterwards and we are going to do the solid foiling. Okay, my timer button is off so I'm going to go ahead and release this from the platform, because mine is a little hard to pull out. You want to go ahead and put your foil pretty side down and then add your cardstock, whatever you are foiling to. This is 100 pound hammer mill, smooth white. And then you want to add the two shims come with this, the hot foil system. Now the frosted green shim is the heat resistant one. So that's the one you want to put closest to the heat source. And then I'm just going to go ahead and run it through my die cut machine nice and slow. So that, my little uh, roller thing is very squeaky. So I do apologize if that was really loud in your ears. I'm not sure if it comes through on Zoom. It was very squeaky, so. All right, let's grab this and let's see how our results went. And we got just perfect results on there. Look at that. All right, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to foil it here momentarily. Let me just get the hexagon off. I'm going to disperse that heat on my glass mat. Uh, these, the hot foil systems do come with their own little mats that you can use for that. But what Heather and I have noticed is if you go ahead and put your hot foil plate on a glass mat, it actually cools down extremely quickly. And then you can uh, put it away. You don't have to let it sit there for a while. Now, it's going to be a little bit while we wait for um, my solid plate to heat up. 
What I have found in my solid foiling path is that um, I mine my system requires it to be heated up twice. I'm trying to get this to unroll on here. It's got a little roll back. Um, so I'm just waiting for it to tell me the platform is ready. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat this guy up twice. And while we do that, I might die cut out the other hexagon piece to save time and get it ready. So form is ready. Let's go ahead and click that button. Cheryl, we actually only recently learned about the frosted green gem as well being the heat resistant one. I think we learned that a few months ago. So you are not alone in that. Um, we only recently learned it as well. Uh, we So we like to share that info when we get it. Because like I said, we weren't aware of that either. So I think I'm just going to cut out the inner part of the hexagon for now. Because um, I think I want to be using this more as my background. So I'm going to pick that second sized hexagon. And we're going to go ahead and line it up. Now, I don't think I currently have any used tape. So I am just going to grab a couple of pieces to tape it down. Okay, so timer button for the first time went off. So I'm gonna reset process. I am going to uh, basically undo the platform from the base and plug it back in. Soon enough, that platform ready light will turn back on and I'm gonna run that timer button one more time. There it is. And this for me just um, ensures that the solid plate is heated up enough. It's a really big piece of metal, especially compared to your hot foil plates. So it's just really good to make sure that it's nice and hot before you use it. Okay. And while it's finishing up the heat up process, I'm just going to go ahead and get this cut out. And there we have it. And now we have this nice little window already cut out, ready to go. Like I said, I wasn't, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna use the solid or the standard foiling today. So um, I'm I'm liking that I'm gonna have both options available to me. Oh, kind of writing with the, I should have picked different tape. Okay, we are ready to go on the soil solid foiling. You can see like that's, my uh, initial foil plates already pulled down, so I can go ahead and put it away. And now let's grab our solid piece here and let's remove our platform from the base first and third. Pooch that back down. Now you wanna go ahead and just make sure that that hexagon is as centered in the plate as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Add your cardstock down. Go ahead and add those two shims with the frosted green closest to the heat. And now the only difference you're going to see from my process here is that I am going to run this through fold forwards and backwards. So there's really no risk of anything shifting with the solid plate. And um, I think that the running back and forth just adds a little bit more pressure to make sure you're getting a really good um, add, you know, add your adhering of that foil. I guess I don't have a better way to, I don't have better words for that. So I'm going to do a little test real quick, just in the corner. And you know what? I'm getting a little bit of fuzzy results. So I'm going to actually run this through one more time. Maybe my hot foil plate just wasn't quite um, heated up enough. I'm going to check down here too. Funny enough, yeah, I'm kind of still getting a little fuzzy. So I'm glad that happened though, because I can show you guys the way that I troubleshoot through 
when you feel like you're getting fuzzy results. So just put that foil back, back in place and we'll run it through. And I actually may run the heat sort. I may let it heat up with the heat source this time and then run it through again. So this doesn't happen to me extremely frequently. Um, so my, my assumption is I, it just hadn't heated up enough yet for me. So, or maybe I have a little bit of fuzziness on the, the hot foil. Who knows the foil roll? We're just going to try this one more time and see if I get a little bit better results. Happy to see some more people joining in. Uh, it's always okay to jump in any time in our lives. They will always be available for replay if you missed parts of it afterwards. Um, but we're just happy when you can join in and when you're able. I'm just waiting for this to heat up. And now let's run it through one more time and just see if we get a little bit better results. If they're not perfect, you know what? It's okay. Uh, in the end, it's handmade, not Hallmark. I can just use that stand foiling if I really feel like the results aren't great. But the other thing about it is if you have some little mistakes here and there on your solid foiled areas, a lot of times you can just uh, doctor those up with, um, you can put things over top of it, et cetera. So in the end, turned out great. Maybe a little bit of fuzziness up in here, but I'm gonna cut that away. So not a huge deal. So there is just a little bit of troubleshooting for you guys if you ever have not ideal solid foiling results. Okay, let's do a little bit of desk cleanup here. I will just let the solid plate uh, cool off on the yeah, off on my hot foil system over here. Um, I will finish the die cutting later. Let's go ahead and get going on our stamping and such with the floral bobble set. So we are going to use floral bobble for the next part. And then, <laughs> this is better than horrible, right? I think it turned out pretty darn good, considering I didn't get the very best of results. Beginning. All right, so here is my really loved floral bobble set. I'm just going to, I'm just kind of trying to gently get that. I can never remember. I know this fits somewhere on an A2. There we go. You got to angle it that way. All right, here we go. And then we can add, oopsies, add magnets. Here and here. I know I'm the same. I can never decide if I if I like the standard or the solid foiling. I think they both have their own like kind of vastly different look. Right. So there is our floral bobble set. So today I am going to ink it up in rocky slope, and I actually think I may end up just keeping it rocky slope. Um, I think I'm going to like this light, this light uh, outline. Ideally, I probably would prefer if I was doing this light outline, I probably would prefer it in Misty Coast, but I know that that's a little hard to see on camera or on video. So I think Rocky Slope is the better choice just so that it's easier to see for you guys today. Sure. And we got good results on that. So I don't feel the need to ink it up. Now I am going to keep the stamp on the misty just in case I want to bring it back and re-stamp it afterwards. I don't know that I will because I am going to go for that uh, softer look. But if I feel like it needs an additional uh, impression, I have that available to me by keeping the stamp in my misty. We've actually a whole lot of videos on hot foiling. We actually have two 101 classes. 
Um, if you just look on our, our foiling playlist, we have a hot foiling 101 and then a solid hot foil plate 101 as well. And then we just, you know, we do, um, we do hot foil a lot in our lives and um, some of our team members hot foil in their weekly YouTube videos here and there. So you can find a lot of foiling on our channel. All right, now that the hot foiling is done, please pardon me real quick. I'm just gonna lower my camera down a little bit so you can see this process a little bit better. And let me grab my stands real quick. I'm not sure if I need two at once, so I'll just grab them in case I do. And we are going to go ahead and start the stenciling. So Floral Bobble is a five piece stencil set. If you are, I don't have much of a glare right now, I don't think. So in the upper left corner of each stencil, they're numbered. However, you can arrange them in any order that you prefer. And then there are little alignment guides in the corner. Now the alignment guides are there for if you are planning to use the stencils by themselves. Obviously I am not doing that today. So what I will do instead is I will align the stencil openings to that stamped image. So I'm just forgoing those alignment guides in each corner. And then I'm going to take this down into place um, once I've aligned it to the stamped image. And yes, we finally, I, we are definitely finally starting to get some details into place for our upcoming foiling event. It will it will be a smaller, I think it's like a one day event, but we're finally nailing some stuff down on it. So definitely be on the lookout for that registration to come soon. All right, so I actually will be doing some multiple colors on this one. So we're actually gonna start with ballet slipper. The only thing I'm going to use the ballet slipper on is the bow. I want the base layer of the bow to be ballet slipper. So I'm gonna go with that first. I'm gonna use my bigger brush to just get some quicker coverage on that bow. Okay. So that speaking of events, so while I'm ink blending, um, uh, if you you may have you may have joined us or you may have seen last month, Heather and I we introduced a well, we're we're spearheading a what am I doing? I still need to finish these dentals. We're spearheading a new um, event called um, Create and Connect Craft Along. Uh, registration just went live for the next Craft Along which of course we would love for you guys to join us. Um, and it's just a fun, it's a, it's a fun Zoom session that, a Zoom meeting that you get the link to once you register. It'll take place on Friday, September 15th, starting at 5.30. Class technically commences um, at uh, about six, but you can join on to the meeting at 5.30 and hang out with us for a little bit before we get going. I have added all of the links, the registration links and the class bundle uh, into the video description below. If you guys wanna join us this month, we would love to have you. And keep in mind, you don't have to have the class bundle. Uh, we give you some options within the um, event PDF of other products you could use that maybe you have on hand. But if you do want the class product, um, it is offered at a little bit of a discount and it's brand new product from our holiday release. So definitely something to check out if uh, you wanna do a little bit more event type things with us. All right. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So I'm doing the little floral section in dual tones here. Um, I did coral reef and peach buzz for this to find my look free cloth. And I'm just going to buff my stencil a little clean. All right. So there 
is the start of our floral bottle. Okay, so we are going to move on here to the next layer. For this layer, basically, if you get that ribbon lined up, the rest of those flowers really do fall into place. So for this one, we're going to stick with coral reefs, but I am going to bump up to apricot. For the next shade of orange. It was really super fun to see everyone using product they had on hand, maybe the last craft along. Some people chose to use stick with the class bundle. It was really super fun. We enjoyed the entire thing and it was really fun. Um, when I wasn't teaching, I got to see everybody. I actually created along with, but um, I also got to check out everybody creating with Heather and she got to do that. So vice versa. It really was an extremely fun thing. I feel like we've worked out um, some kinks that we had for things that we didn't know in our, our Zoom software that we needed to turn on, captioning. So I feel like we have found uh I have learned a lot on doing a big group meeting like so it was really super fun all right so you'll notice I'm sticking with coral reef so uh, uh the second layer of the bow is coral reef and then in the flower I am just going to work in that additional layer of coral reef we'll move up one color on the last set of florals but I didn't want to make these too deep toned so some of them I'm doing tone on tone just to avoid. And then I'll do a little bit of apricot in the rest of the flowers here. I want this to be a little bolder than peach fuzz. I'm still gonna try to be a little light-handed on it because I have one more layer that is going to stick with. Feeling pretty good about that. Okay, coral reef thing can go away. Apricot is staying. Let's take a look at the next layer. Look at how beautiful that bow is coming along here. Just love how this bow looks on this set. All righty. So then we are moving on to stencil number three. This is the last layer of the bows. And we're also working in some uh, more of the kind of the berry options. Oh, I actually think I might need coral reef one more time on this. Because I don't really want those berries to be red. I don't want this to look Christmassy. So I am going to grab that coral reef one more time. And we are going to do a combination of coral reef and apricot berries. I don't want to push up to the patch and fruit on the berries. I think they'll look a little too red on that. <laughs> so, so, Mary Kay, you have a hard time practicing the light-handed part, and I have a little bit harder time being heavy-handed with stencils. So, you know, that's always a catch-22, isn't it? Put some apricot here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the peach fuzz, or excuse me, the passion fruit, really quickly. So that is going to be the next color that I come in with. Let's go ahead and get some apricot blended into these little berries. Feeling good about that. Now I happen to know, I am pretty certain I used my red brush last on a little bit deeper color. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it really quickly. So I'm just spritzing a little bit of rubbing alcohol onto my, my um, 
lint free cloth here. And I am just going to buff out that tone because I'm pretty sure that was very licious. And I don't really want the deepness of very licious in this card. I want it to stick with passion fruit. So I want to give it a good clean. And I think we're to a point now where we are good with that. So, and now my dry, my brush is already dry, so I can use it again. It's nice and clean. And um, we are good to use the passion fruit. So passion fruit is going to be the final bow details here. And then I'm just going to add a little bit into these lower flowers. Nothing too, nothing too much on the lower flowers, right? The bobble flowers, I should say. Just a little added. So that stencil is done. And look at that. Loving this one. All right, we have two stencils left. We are getting to our greenery. And I am choosing to go with a really light set of greenery. So I'm going to mix our two lightest shades of green that we currently offer, fresh pear and mint. I think fresh pear is a little bit lighter than mint is. If it's not, I can always just blend a little heavier candid with uh, the, the mint if need be. I am just working on getting this stencil nice and lined up. And we are going to start with fresh pear. And then I'll come in with the next stencil and add the mint into it. Uh, well, Teresa, if you look in our, um, we have already introduced our new shades of color, and um, there are some more greens included in those colors. So, uh, so these, yes, these are the two lightest green shades that we currently offer, but we are filling out our greens in our upcoming ink selection. So, so we do have some more shades coming, which may or may not be lighter than these. Um, I feel like there might be one that's at least lighter. So that was just more of a general, general comment. I think a little deep at the bottom of that one, but I think in the end it will be okay. Hopefully it will um, kind of got it blob in there. You must have pushed a little too hard. So there is stencil number four. We've got just one stencil left to go. And this is where mint is going to come into play. Oh, well, thank you, Lori. That's really kind. I just happened to look up and see your comments. And that is obviously warms our heart to hear that and we really appreciate it it's very very kind of you let's go all right bring this guy lined up the, the stencils are pretty easy to line up because pretty much every single stencil has an area that hasn't been colored in yet or blended in yet. so you'll notice that there is this little ornament piece here i am not going to blend it in because i'm going to trim it away um I know, right? I'm making green leaves on this one. It's pretty wild. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to leave this uncolored. It's no, there's no point in me putting ink on this because I'm going to trim this away because I don't want it to look like a Christmas, Christmas ornament. All right. So mint, I'm obviously wanting to be a little bit heavier. It's definitely a little darker than that fresh pear. So I think that this is going to be, this was perfect. Choice. 
Well, so exciting to hear Jennifer has arranged her, has done some organizing, arranging for the new inks. I just, I've actually been doing the same thing. I got my new setup so that I have an, another um, organized more uh, thing for my fold sizing pads on my desk. I got that all figured out. So we're just as excited as you guys are for the new inks coming out, I promise. We've been waiting on pins and needles for them to get here. All right, feeling pretty good about that blend there. So let's wipe the stencil off real quick. So green ink, oh, green ink, and then let's do our final reveal. And I think this turned out so extremely fun. Let me get some things out of the way here. And there is how this turned out. And I am not going to put this back into my stamping platform. I'm going to leave it with that nice, soft outline. That is the uh, look I was, like the exact look I was going for on this. So um, I am going to leave it. Oh, and I've got tape sticking to me. Goodness. <laughs> I'm a hot mess over here. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Okay, before we move on, I am going to go ahead and get the sentiment stencil that I want for this. So I kind of dug through all of the products that we had, and I happened upon the Celebrate in Style product suite. And inside of the Celebrate in Style stencils, there are these sentiments, and I really want to use this congrats sentiment. And then... I am actually going to use this sentiment right here on the inside of my card. It's just perfect for weddings. But let's go ahead and let's grab the correct stencil for the congrats, which is stencil number four. So I have just a scrap piece of cardstock here. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and tape this panel down. We're just going to do this the same as we did a moment ago. Maybe a little bit big. And then we're gonna we're going to just stencil this onto a piece of scrap weight cardstock here. Okay, so one thing to um keep in mind when you are stenciling over top. Um, oopsies. um and also grab peach fuzz. When you are stenciling over top um, a stenciled word like this, is you just want to be light-handed. There are little pieces in here that can move. And so you don't want to you don't want to push them around. You don't want your brushes to get underneath them. So I think there's something to be said about having just a nice light hand when you're doing stencil words. So I'm gonna start with the peach fuzz at the top and then we're gonna come in with the coral reef in the bottom. Also use like a stencil spray if you wanted you to stay down a little bit better. I'm gonna check it. I think I got, yeah, I got good results. Sometimes I sometimes I press a little too hard and then I get ink in an area I don't want it, but it's time. It actually ended up nice and perfect. So I think just gentleness and not pressing too hard is a key to when you are stenciling. Oh, wow. I think I missed a question about the my, my glass mat, but I believe Heather answered it. So thank you, Heather. Thanks for joining us while you could, for those that are having to uh, head out. Totally understandable. All right, so 
go ahead and set these aside real quick. All right, we've got our ink blending fully done here. So now I can set these aside. Let's start doing some die cutting. So I need the coordinating die set for four bubble, and I need it for the congrats words that I just stenciled. So let's start with four bubble. Okay, let's use up some of this tape. And I am just going to take a moment to line this die up. It's a one piece die, so it's cutting out each of these elements. Um, the elements are each, they're all separate, but you're only having to use the one die to cut them all out at the same time. So you don't have to line up multiple dies. We love that about our one pieces. And they are a little bit bigger. So it's always a good rule of thumb to just take a little extra time to line them up. And I'm gonna run these through and I'll be right back with them all. Okay. Yes, that is a really good point. We did choose not to use new inks for the holiday event, just really truly based on time. It would have been really stressful, I think, to uh, try to get them in line for everybody um, and have them readily available. So we're using our current 48 colors for upcoming holiday event, um, just because we felt like that would be easier. And look at how amazing those turned out. I've got all of those pieces cut out, a little bobble. All right, let's go ahead and cut our sentiment really quickly. Amy, this set, uh, the floral bobble, sentiments are you? Floral bobble set is from our um, holiday create connect event last year, yes. Not the holiday release, but the holiday last year. All right, die to cut out the congrats word. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. No, right, Lori, the bow is like the best part. I think it's my favorite part of the floral bubble set. I just love that bow. It's so pretty. Okay. Let me get that off. The tape is kind of sticking. It is. And then look at how fun that sentiment turned out. Oh, Ruth, I am enjoying this Gemini too. Now that I have figured out some pressure stuff on it. So what I actually found, I'm just going to cut a couple additional pieces of the sentiment to be able to stack it and make it a little bit sturdier. So something I found is that the recommended sandwich was just a little bit too much pressure for my dies. Um, so I ended up pulling the magnet and adding in a paper shim, and it works so much better now. Um, I'm not getting such deep impressions that I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really typically want to see on a die. So now that I've kind of dialed in my, my sandwich settings, I am absolutely loving it. Okay. You'll see, I did a little practice run <laughs> of the word, the congrats word. I just want to cut one more of these out really quickly. We'll just cut right over top of that because I don't need the practice run anymore. And I think we have just a little bit more die cutting to do on the bottoms. Three pieces of those. I think that we can call this hard stock piece spent. So let's go ahead and put away the uh, quarter moving dies. I don't need these anymore. I'll just stick that back here. 
let's get our backgrounds finished real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab hexagons. And then uh, this is nice stitched rectangle, which I use quite often. Okay, so we've got the one. I still am not completely sure which background I wanna use. So I am gonna cut this one out the same. So the one thing to know about foil is that tape is gonna pull it off. So this inner hexagon I'm having to sacrifice for the sake of the outer hexagon. Not a huge deal to me, um, but I know that some people would probably rather save that piece and get to use it. But I really do wanna make sure that the hexagon die doesn't move. And in order to do that, taping it down is the best bet. So I am just going to sacrifice it for the sake of the greater good here on my card anyway. Jennifer, I think there are some other companies doing them, but that's definitely kind of our thing is the one piece. We we do it pretty much wherever we see uh, where it makes sense. Wow, uh, we don't do it on every set, but we definitely do it where we feel like it makes sense. And it with that one piece option also makes it really easy to line up. Um it makes it really easy to line up the stencils and, and such. So we like the whole one piece option for everything. All right, I am going to go ahead and trim the solid one down with a stitched rectangle here. I'm gonna see what this one looks like first and see what I think before I cut the other one. Because it's possible if I choose to use this one, I'll keep the other one as is so I have more options for it at a later date. I'm just really trying to make sure this is lined up straight. I don't want to have a crooked hexagon frame. <laughs> and so with that being said, when you are taping something to foil you don't want to mess up, make sure no tape overlaps. So I've made Sure that there isn't any overlapping tape on that foil that I don't want to accidentally miss. All right, so let's see. All right, and there is our lovely panel. Love it. I don't need these anymore. I think I'm going to do the solid foil diversion. So I think I might just leave this. Maybe. No, I don't know. I'm kind of double minded about this. You know what? I actually I think I'm going to change my mind. I think I'm going to use the white version because I think I'm going to put a colored card base underneath it. And I feel like the solid foil on top of colored would just be a lot. So I think I'm going to pivot and I'm going to go ahead and cut out the standard foil version. And I will use that solid version in a different card. There we go. And then I think we will be done die cutting after I do this. And we can move on to assembling. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this better just because I'm gonna put it on a colored card base. Okay. All right, we are quickly done die cutting. So I am gonna set all of that aside. I'm gonna check the time, okay? Got about 10 minutes. We'll see if I make it on time or not today. 
we're going to, I'm definitely going to try. Okay, I've got this kind of pinky color card, card base and I have this pinky color card base. And so I know I want this to hang from here. And I already can tell you I like the pink better. So we are going to set that peach one aside. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab out. I'm going to fussy cut the ornament piece out from. So I just don't want the ornament part. Here. And now you never know that it was there. Yeah, I mean, I could always grab that and see what I think. Let's see. So there's the white. And here's the gold. Ooh, it's actually kind of pretty. It's actually kind of lovely, isn't it? Well, I don't know. White or solid? Hmm. While we think about that, I'm gonna I'm going to assemble this little bobble here. Right, I think that's where I'm gonna place this guy. Let's get just a little bit for the glue. Uh oh, looks like I got a little clog. Let me get that. I must have. All right. Let's here. Have I have that? And so now it doesn't because I trimmed off that ornament piece. It doesn't really even look like an ornament. It just looks like the floral bobble. I know you guys. I'm not sure. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest to. Well, let me look at my sentiment here. So that is the overlap. And this will be just in here somewhere. You know what? I think that I'm going to go with gold, which is weird because normally I would pick white. I don't know a lot of you. I, it, this is definitely like a <laughs> not everyone agrees, but I think I'm going to go with the gold today. We're just going to go for it. We don't show the solid version um, there. So I think that for the sake of uh, having some more samples out there with the solid, uh, the solid foiled version. I'm going to go for it. And I actually do think it's really quite lovely. So let's go ahead and add this to up front. Oh, Donna, that's a good question. Um, don't keep track of my cardstock too much. It is highly possible that it's one of those four pack, 110 pound um, cardstock packs from Michaels. Also, be spellbinders. I don't know for sure. I'm the worst person to ask about cardstock because I just, I kind of arrange it in rainbow order and I rip off all the packaging for the most part. So, but it's a safe bet, it's one of those options. Okay. Exactly. So, and I'll have to make another, um, I'll definitely have to make another option with the white and just see how it works. I'm definitely going for the gold this time, just so that we have more samples out there with the solid forming. There's that. How do I want to attach this? I think I want it to go over top. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll put it underneath. And then I'll probably trim it. 
it. So I know I want to pop just the base part of my um, little bobble up. So I'm just gonna grab it. This is just some pre-made foam. I'm trying to use up all these little foam bits I have for making my large panels. So I've kind of challenged myself to start using them so they don't just sit in a drawer and go to waste. You're welcome, Donna. Sorry, I'm not much more help. <laughs> I'm kind of the worst to ask about cardstock, honestly. All right. Right there. Oh, hi, Janine. I'm glad you could make it too. No worries that you're running late. This, of course, will be available for replay right after I end. So if you want to catch up on anything you missed, you sure can. Sometimes it takes a little while for the live chat to show up, um, but it will eventually. Sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it takes hours. I don't fully understand <laughs> that whole process, but it does eventually show up if you want to catch any of the conversation. Oh, sky centered. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and trim the top off here. There we go. Well, that's fun, isn't it? Just going to kind of give the bow a little fluff. And I forgot I have these little extra foliage pieces. I'm completely sure where those are, those are going to go yet. Let's go ahead and get our sentiment put together. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. I'm glad I've sold you on the goal. I was kidding about it at first, but now I'm actually really loving how it looks. It warms the card up a lot, actually. And if you know and me, you know I love a nice warm toned card. That's probably my go-to is warm colors. Not a great lineup, was it? It's just a glass mat and it can be clean. Oh, I'm just going to tuck this to at the very bottom. So I only need to add a little glue on each side, like that. And then finally, I'm just going to add, oh, no, these guys. Where do we want to stick these guys? They, of course, look nice up by the bill. It's always an option. But also, no, I don't like that. I'm just going to kind of go with the status quo. I'm putting them up by the bow. Probably leave them off too. Where is clogging up glue? Oh yeah, this could totally be turned into a shaker. I'm not in the background there would be really pretty. Oh, stop get it, stop moving. So, so there's that. All right. Finally, I'm gonna put some of these lovely ombre glitter drops. These are the pixie dust, which are a selection of purple and gold. So I don't obviously want the purple. So I separated those out onto a different um, tray. But I wanted to show them to you just so you could see what they look like for reference. But I am just going to add a couple. Oops, that's the wrong side. I am just going to add a couple of the... Oh, it's too big. We don't know. So the appropriately colored um, pixie dust drops in here. Let me, uh, 
stuck one in here. There's a couple over here. And I think that is perfect. It looks like Heather is uh, announcing winner since we're right at the one o'clock time. I am almost done, but um, congratulations to Cheryl Betton. Uh, Heather has given you all of the information you need. Claim your prize um, in the little announcement. So just send an email to me, give me a few days to answer, and I'll get your gift card code over to you. And there we have it. Finished up with our pixie dust glitter drops. I'm going to go ahead and get these put away. And then I will flip the camera around and send you all on your way. There is a little close up of today's card. I hope you enjoyed watching it come together. Okay, give me a minute to put the camera around. All right, Ooh, more. Thanks for everyone who joined us to this week. This week is uh, this is our only live this week, so there isn't a scrapbooking live. Uh, you can join us next week for our next scrapbooking live, I believe. And other than that, that's everything that I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed my fun little wedding card. Um, as oh, as I mentioned, I didn't I kind of ran out of time, but there is a sentiment on the celebrate and style stamp set that says, "May this beautiful day be just the beginning of a lifetime filled with happiness." And I think I might go ahead and just stamp that on uh, the inside of the card. So ran out of a little bit of time to do that today, but just an option if you wanted to add an inner sentiment. All right, guys, that is everything that I have for you today. Uh, we'll see you. I think Heather will be live next week. Um, and then also we'll have a scrapbooking live, which I think is Kathleen, but don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure. Oh, Vicki, this is our dual tip embellishment tool. It's got a the, embellish, the embellishment wax tip on one end. And then a craft pick with a ballpoint tip on the other. You can find that. It is linked in the video description along with all of the other products I used today. And you can also find it in our online shop. All right, friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. And uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye.